I think one of the most fascinating giant shifts that's happened in recent history started in the late 1960s, it really took off in the 70s, which was the rise of a sort of powerful individualism, a feeling throughout Western society, it began in America, but it came here very quickly, that I as an individual are the most important thing, and what I feel, what I want, is the most truthful, authentic and right thing and the idea that you should be told what to do by politicians, mm. by those in power over you, is wrong. It's inauthentic. What, you should be true to yourself. That became a very powerful thing, and it rose up. It was good in many ways. It liberated people and, and stopped us being told what to do by old corrupt elites. That's really good. But it had a very strange effect on politics, because if you run a political party... You have to get people together, united in a single goal. But if you've got a society of millions of individuals who all have their own desires, their own truth, their own idea of what is true, then it's very difficult to get a collective movement together. And I think the real effect, not just on politics, but the real effect was on the radical left. Because if you look at the 1960s, both in America and here, it was called the New Left. And they united together. It came out of the civil rights movement and they gave themselves up to a movement. So, for example, in America and the civil rights movement, young white activists, middle class activists, went down and joined with black activists and gave their lives up in some cases, mm. but gave up years to struggle to change the world. And they did. If you then get individualism rising up, what you don't want to do is give yourself up for years to a movement which you just subsume yourself into. You want to express yourself. And why I think Patti Smith's interesting is because she's one of the first people you see making a shift from the idea that radicalism is about giving yourself up to a group and becoming part of something bigger, to an idea that, no, the way to be radical is to be a self-expressive individual, and the way to do it is through art. And what you can use art is as an imaginative expression of your radicalism. Now, I then question whether that actually can change the world, because what drops away is the power of collective action, which is how you change the world through the civil rights movement. It's very imaginative, and a lot, you know, and a lot of the music that came out of it is beautiful and wonderful, but did it really change the world? That's what I sort of question in the film. At the same time as Patti Smith and others were doing that, and I'm not challenging the music or anything like that, but what I'm saying is, is questioning slightly how much power you have as a radical self-expressive artist, because at the same time as she was doing that, what was happening was that modern consumer capitalism was looking at this me generation and these individuals and going, well, we can help you express yourself. And suddenly, instead of giving you the same car, the same coat, the same clothes, you could have a whole range of different ones, so you could all be self-expressive in your different ways. And there is an argument that it sort of modern consumerism was rescued by the me generation because it suddenly allowed you to sell lots and lots of different things to lots of people who wanted to express themselves in different ways, which means that the idea of self-expression becomes absolutely central to the power of modern capitalism. It, it's, it's what drives it. So if you then have a radical art which is based on the idea of self-expression, which it is, then however radical your message is, and however powerful what you're saying is, the fact that you're doing it through self-expression means that actually really what you're doing is feeding the, the underlying ideology of modern consumer capitalism, it, because it depends on the whole idea of, that you're a self-expressive individual. Mm. I mean, someone once said to me that the most radical thing you can do these days is just not be self-expressive. And one person said, the most radical thing you could do is come out of your house one morning, turn right, walk across Europe on a line you've drawn across a map to Aleppo, get there and don't tell anyone and don't write a book about it and don't tweet it, don't tell anyone.